Hi, Robert here from Pioneer Smokehouses, and today we're going to be using my Masterbuilt 1050 Gravity Series to do a uh, spatchcock chicken. So I don't know if you know what spatchcock chicken is, but basically what you do is you cut the backbone out and lay it flat. And uh, it's, in my opinion, the best way to cook a whole chicken if you're not planning on stuffing it. Also, it is the best way to cook a whole turkey. And uh, you will end up saving so much total cook time when you lay it out flat. So first thing that we're gonna do is, I'm gonna show you this picture right here, and if you take the turkey, excuse me, if you take the chicken, and you just cut the backbone, so you go from the back where the tail is, and go both sides. You want to use a really good pair of kitchen shears for that. I have a really high-end pair. Now you can buy a pair from the dollar store or whatever you'd like to do, but they really, first of all, they won't hold up, and second of all, they might not cut through the bones. So you want to make sure you have a good pair. This pair here, which I'll link in the description below, is a really uh, solid pair. Also, I'll link down in the description below the recipe for the uh, chicken and then also a recipe for a turkey. These are full articles and they contain a lot of other things including the spice rub. In today's recipe we're just going to use um, garlic, pepper and poultry seasoning and then of course no recipe would be complete for me if it didn't have smoked paprika. So if you look here you can see that I completely cut it down and laid it out flat and then I liberally seasoned the inside because you're really not gonna eat along the inside so you can put a little bit too much uh, seasoning on there. And then I did the outside. Now don't forget to add salt to taste. I will avoid salt if I possibly can. And when I buy all my seasonings, which like I use mostly spice under seasonings, I always buy the salt free ones and they definitely um, leave room for salt. I mean, you can put sprinkle just a little bit on there. I like to add most of my salt either at the end or um, after it's actually served on the table. So I'm going to show you this here. And, uh, I've shown you a couple of the pictures ahead of time and then this is how it looks right now. Preheated the smoker and I have got it on 250 so that way I can get a nice smoke on it and uh, get it cooking at the same time without overcooking it. I'm going to go ahead and open it. And you see here, I have the middle grate removed. Uh, last time I used a smoker, I did a beer can chicken. But I wanted to go ahead and continue to run it that way for the next couple of uh, recipes if I didn't need to and get a better idea of how well it worked. It is slightly warmer on this side where the um, heat enters from and the diffuser is a little bit cooler, but not a lot. It's just so close. So I'm just gonna, I did cut off both wings and uh, just the wing tips and you can see that in the picture. They tend to burn, um, but cut it out like that and I'm gonna lay it down like this for a while. Get it spread out just a little bit. That looks pretty good. Um, so I'm not going to insert the temperature probe yet. I like to wait a little while. Um, I do plan on flipping it, and it would be kind of cumbersome to have the temperature probe in there and then have to pull it out and remove it, and that'll also let juice leak out. Something else that I have today out here, which I did use uh, last time because I like to check the temperature in multiple spots, is a instant read probe thermometer. Um, this one is Thermopro, and I'll uh, link a, uh, another video and um, information on this in there. This is super cheap. I mean, it's really hard to go wrong and it works great. I've had it for a while and you can just tap on it and the thing will work and you can also turn on the light so that way if it's not uh, bright where you're working, like you're cooking outside, you can turn it right on. Um, and then you hold it and it goes off, push the button and fold it away and you're done. Um, and it has a little magnet on the back, so it'll stay right where you put it, like you put it right there, it'll stay right there. So anyway, we've got the chicken on here, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and close it down. So I'm going to check on the fuel level here today because I started it up without refilling it. 
so it was wherever it ended on the last cook. And uh, it's a little low. It's not going to make it all the way through. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pour some fuel in here. When, when it gets low, you'll see some flames coming all the way through the fuel, and that's not good for your fuel consumption. When it's doing that, it's going to burn through your charcoal really fast. So you want to try to prevent that as much as possible. Um, I want to add a little bit of fruit flavor to it. Normally I don't do a lot of that with the chicken on this smoker, but I'm going to add in some apple chunks. And this is just a bag of Western apple chunks, and you'll see a link in the description. And uh, it might have been a little too much, but that's okay. As I use this smoker more and more, I'm noticing that there's a little bit of creosote built up around the edges. Some of the other people do a couple of different things. One uh, really common thing is a piece of tin foil. Um, if you use like a heavy grade tin foil and fold it over, I think you probably get pretty good results. Another one is um, to take a piece of uh, lava seal and run it around, but you have to get it really close to line up with the top. So I don't know how effective that would be. Um, I do have uh, a couple of rolls of that in my garage, so I might do that. And just a few more little blocks to the top. Um, when it does get down near the bottom, it'll be able to burn it off. Uh, I do want to try to run it out today if I can. Because I haven't done a full clean out of the machine for a while. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to get it empty and then get my shop vac out. So I'll dump out all the ashes and everything and get the shop vac out and completely uh, clean it all out. Now, I mean, you might be able to just brush out a little bit of the stuff and should be fine. Um, but, you know, well, I, I want to get it. It's time to get it completely cleaned up and I might take the grates out and maybe throw the um, upper grates in the dishwasher. So right now we're at bake and um, this is one of my little pet peeves with this thing is that this thermometer doesn't tell me exactly what the temperature is on the inside. And uh, so for long term, I would probably go ahead and replace that with a um, indicator thermometer. It does say on here, smoke, barbecue, grill, and sear. And so, I mean, you have the digital readout, which tells you exactly where you're at. Something to point out that I keep uh, forgetting to mention is that the digital controls, not only are they Wi-Fi, but they're also Bluetooth. I am not a big fan of hooking my phone or anything else to my grill. I just use it that way. Um, but in the near future, I'm going to do a video on just that. That way we can get it going on that. So we're going to go ahead and let this run for a while, probably about an hour, and uh, then we'll check it from there. Um, at that point, we'll flip it, make a decision whether or not we're going to sauce it or not. Uh, I've kind of been feeling like putting on some barbecue sauce. Normally, I only do that on my pieces. Um, but uh, this chicken here, laid out spatchcock, it lends itself well to just about any process. So again, um, we'll uh, cover all that stuff and we'll get some uh, good pictures when it's all done and share that with you too. So we'll be back in a minute here, which will actually be an hour, and I'll talk to you then. All right, so I went ahead and put the middle rack in and uh, move the smoke the chicken up to the middle because I felt like that it wasn't getting enough smoke around it and while it looked like it was cooking pretty well I wanted it to be up here and I left it that way for a few minutes and then I just flipped it just now right after I opened it. So I'm gonna put a picture up here so that way you can see a close-up of what it looks like now on the bottom and uh, it, it's definitely taking the smoke and cooking pretty well. But uh, I went ahead and flipped that, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to insert the probe. So the very end of the probe was hanging out, so it's not hot, so don't grab it if it is hot. But what we're going to do here is I'm going to put it right in here. Slide it in between the skin there and right in there. That is a pretty good 
good place to put in your throat. You want to hit the bone and then just pull back just a little bit. You don't want it sitting on the bone. I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then we'll get a temperature reading of it. So it's 122, so it's got a ways to go still. So I'm going to go ahead and close it. And I'm going to bump the temperature up just a little bit here. I'm going to bring it up to 300. And uh, the reason is, is that I've definitely imparted the flavor that I want in there. And I want to cook it a little bit faster, but still maintain it being juicy. So 275 is always a nice place to cook just about any meat. If you want it more smoky and a longer draw out, you're going to probably want to cook it at 225. But I went ahead and raised it up to uh, 300 here, and uh, we'll see how that goes. And um, we'll check on it in a few seconds for you, but for me, it'll be about an hour. All right. All right, so we are just about coming to the end here, and uh, the uh, chicken uh, looks like it's done to me. I took a couple of temperature readings, and where I put that temperature, the thermometer, it was a little close to the edge, so I think it's actually reading a little hot. Um, and I didn't really want to move it because I didn't want to put more holes in the chicken. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at this really quick. And uh, you can see here that it looks pretty nice. It's uh, got a lot of nice color. And uh, I'm not sure that I want to um, char it, but you can look here, and I'm jumping juice. And juice is running clear, so. But look how loose that is. When that happens, that means that the tendons is really broken down, and that's a good sign. Um, so what I'm going to do is this is the instant read thermometer I was talking about, and like I said, these things are really cheap, and I'll put a link to that again down at the bottom. Um, you should definitely have at least one or two of these around, and the reason I say two is because, like I said, they're cheap. This one's lasted me a long time, but if it did, you would want one for your cooking because food safety is top priority of mine and cooking it I know that you can go a little under but let's follow the FDA guidelines um, but I'll tell you what if you don't keep something refrigerated that is supposed to be refrigerated um, that's where I get scared and that's why I'm really careful with my cold smoking and do not recommend that most people do that at home so I'm going to put that in here so it's just under the rib cage just a little bit and uh, I think I went through just a little too far, but we're showing uh, 179 there. So that means that it is definitely done on the inside, but it feels really soft. So I think that's just, like I said, I think I just went in a little too far. Anyway, she looks done. Uh, it looks really good. And uh, I'll uh, include a picture right here of what it looks like when I cut it up. And uh, that's it for today's video. So don't remember, I mean, <laughs> Oops. So remember, I have all my links below. They are affiliate links. Go check out the article for the chicken. And uh, if you want to buy something, use one of my affiliate links. It'll help support the channel, and I really appreciate it. So I'm going to go eat. You have a great day. Thanks for watching.